What's going on, YouTube? Uh, back at it again today with some more OPTCG content. But first, I wanted to give a big shout out to my boy Jaden S. Uh, he's been with the channel for a long time. And he uh, said he started with a Kinemon list that we showed on the channel a, a couple weeks ago. And he made a couple edits and made it to a top 32 at his regionals. Big congratulations to this guy. Uh, I'm glad I could have helped you in any way, but I'm pretty sure you would have got there anyway. Uh, it takes a lot of good skill to make it to a top 32 finish. I don't know if you're familiar with like other TCGs or if this is your first one. That's even more incredible, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but just wanted to give a big shout out to him. He actually shared with me his deck list and some stats for those who are interested. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, my part-time job has me all around the city, and I'm feeling a little bad t uh, today, so I'm hoping it's not the big C. Um, so I'm hoping we're dodging that. <clears throat> but here we are with his list. So um, big additions that he did. He added the law. Took out the 8 drop, I believe, went for, for the full Odin, and then took out Paradise Waterfall, um, and just went straight Gibson. But other than that, um, oh, he did add a third Rhizo, I believe. I think that's all the variety or, like, differences we had in builds. Um, but super tight list. I mean, it's really hard to go wrong with Kinemon. He's an amazing deck. So congratulations again to Jaden. Uh, he also did share with me some stats, some really cool things. Oh, he took out Hawkins. I have it right in front of me. I'm stupid, guys. <laughs> he took out Hawkins, um, which is, you know, it comes with pluses and bonuses. Uh, I think he went for a little more defense. Hawkins uh, offers you more um, game against, like, Strawbeard. I have noticed that, like, I don't know if it's just the player but i've been demolishing kinemon as a strawberry player um so playing it from the other side i think hawk uh hawkins is a little better but again i can't really talk when my man here took it to top 32 at regionals congratulations and then his matchups for the day were this we had um kinemon mirror uh he won uh going second goes a long way zoro he went second Zoro got the loss. Um, he did say that he had a Luffy and a Diablo Jambe, which, I mean, should be no surprise. But again, if you if you're playing in an area where you know people are just net decking, these adaptations aren't as uh, obvious. But I've always been a big proponent of adding a Luffy. Uh, I don't know how I feel about Jambe. Jambe is more of a set three type of tech, uh, but. Um, Luffy and John Bay are both worthy considerations that help you get under Kinemon. So, you know, that is a, something to be aware of. The Shanks and Rush Sanji, I, I, that's a bit weird to me. Uh, he definitely would be losing the mirror in my opinion. But anyway, so that's how he got his first loss of the day. Uh, he unfortunately looks like he lost the die roll against Kinemon, so you know how that goes. Um, he went sec uh, He had to go first, and then his opponent apparently had the nuts. Uh, he beat Zephyr. Zephyr can be tough, um, but if they brick, I mean, they brick. That's the one thing that sucks about Zephyr is that there's no consistency. There's no extra draw outside of Queen. So even though you have technically all the tools to destroy Kinemon, um, like I, I've bodied Kinemon a billion times, but there are just days where you don't draw. Um, and then it just looks like he won all his dice rolls after that one. <laughs> well, actually, he went Smoker went second, and then he beat three Zoros to finish off the day. Wow. Um, just, I mean, just because you go second and you get to guarantee your Okiku on turn two doesn't always <clears throat> translate to a victory against Zoro. Just because they can curve nine drop. But was not an issue for him, as you can see, towards the end of the day. So he was able to finish out strong. Um... Probably these early losses screwed his breakers because I think 7-2 could get you top 16. So um, but either way, again, top 32 is nothing to sneeze at. Really glad that, you know, 
you guys are succeeding, that the content is helping. So uh, that makes me really happy. <laughs> um, but without further ado, let's get into our topic of the day. All right, guys. So this is my original straw beard list. Um, I did take a note from the Zoros. Uh, and I decided to go with a chopper. Um, this could have been a 14th 2K counter. There was a list that I know one that had 16 2K counters and cut, I think, a guard point. Uh, I don't know if he cut two, but I know he definitely cut at least one. Um, I am not a fan of that. I think your hands will brick too often with too much counter because that is a problem. Uh, so you either, as a strawberry player, you'll either draw too much counter or too much gas and then you can't counter in the end game. Uh, so that's my experience with the deck. So I opted for the chopper and then you'll ask why. Uh, he's a tech for Odin. You don't play him early. You hold this card until the very end. Um, let them use all their tap cards. Because a, a very easy way to lose a game is against Odin. That double attack swing for gigantic ass numbers will kill you uh, by itself. If they have any other swings to support it, to drain your hand, that's even just more detrimental. Um, but that is literally the only way I lose with this deck, unless, again, I, I brick. I have to brick really bad to lose games. Um, but this is the deck. I did cut down on one ace. Uh, just I, I, I like having the two rush throw. Um, you're going to replace these for the four ofs, but I, I, again, I like having those gap fillers on my curve. Um, a nice tech that I saw from the weekend that people... I'm not claiming that I did it, but I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> Was the threes uh, Robin and Vista split. I like this a lot. <clears throat> it's been very uh, helpful for me. People have jumped on the King Do. Why? Because King Do dodges a lot of random things like Jet Pistol, uh, bounce cards like Fist or anything else like that. Uh, and it's just a 7k natural swing, which is uh, amazing if you don't know. <laughs> Um, other than that, everything else is your standard affair. We're, if we play first, uh, in your red mirrors, guys, I'll, I'll talk about this real quick. You want to go first, like, even against like Zoro and the mirror. The mirror lets you play your four drop first, but I like having the nine drop. This is probably more relevant against Zoro. I haven't really gotten to test the mirror a lot. My locals is a lot of Zoro. Um, and a couple smoker and kinemon thrown in um at least from my experience the northeast is heavy zoro or i can't even say the northeast i'm not i, I don't travel that much <laughs> but at least in the you know new york city area uh we have a lot of zoro um but i like having the nine drop going in and playing it first that is a very easy way to beat zoro um, as I said in my last video where I was talking about the metagame and all the bands and etc. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go check that out by the way. I drop a lot of knowledge. Um, I'm not saying everything I'm saying is factual. You know, it's my opinion. You know, take it with a grain of salt. But um, it's a very good idea to, you know, let these things simmer for a while and then come back and like process it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was first one to be on Bandai's Twitter saying that there, it was a stupid ban, but <laughs> after I calmed down, you know, I, I had a different opinion. But anyway, this is it. I like it a lot. Um, I only lost in my most recent locals to a Zoro player, a uh, really strong player. Thankfully, um, I'm blessed to have strong players in my locals. Um, there's always like one or two that like I'll see as I travel to like Queens, Brooklyn, etc. And I'm, I'll find like a really strong player and that's always really good to have just to have that experience. Um, but yeah, he was my only loss of the day uh, because my ending hand when he was swinging with his last attack for 7k was double A's swipe beard and it was like, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, this is the deck. Let's get some games. I completely forgot to finish my thought. It's it's my sickness. <laughs> my brain's not there. All right, so I get to go second. Uh, this is an okay go second hand. It's not a great go second hand. Um, 
ideally, obviously, I can find like a Nami. Uh, I have a high percentage of getting the four drop again, so I'll mulligan. All right, we have Zoro into five, so not exactly what I wanted, but uh, what I was trying to say earlier, uh, in my other video that I was talking about, I don't like that people counter too early or they are too reluctant to take at least one hit uh, just because they want to preserve life with nine drop. I think that's a waste of time um, and resources as a quick way to lose games. Uh, usually when I stick my nine drop, I'll go down to one. I think that's fine. There's nothing um, bad about that at all. Like I'll counter early once and then on his next attack for six, I'll, I'll uh, take one. Especially if you don't even have the nine drop yet, like take the hit, bro. Like, yeah, you are drawing more cards, <clears throat> so you have a likelihood of seeing it later. But like, it's, in my opinion, it's never worth it to just blow your load. Because if I end up having to go late against this deck, like I'm going to be real tight if I don't have um, like these free 2k counters. six with zero so Ivan's goal is to drop to zero quickly um, but Strawbeard does put a lot of pressure and I get to do these double six Ks force him to have the 2k counters I'm surprised he didn't block or use one already. There it is. Uh, my next swing. I'll see what he does, honestly. And I'll take one. Um, I might take the chance to develop the Robin. I'm not sure yet. Depends on how he blocks here. Against Ivan, there's no threat of early removal, or hard removal, I should say. So I can actually deploy this chopper pretty comfortably. Um, so let's attack for six. Next turn, I'll try and curve ace. Uh, and then I'll have Robin available and then stick the nine. Like I said, it's not the end of the world if I don't get to play this with uh, life up. Because um, Ivan, like, he has his explosive turn coming up right now, but it's very manageable because he's not going to be able to pressure me and survive. Right, so this Robin is huge. Um, I get food for her. I'm most likely gonna kill this though, depending on his hand size here. He draws a Vankov, so he didn't have it yet. Um, but the shields are certainly up. Um, I'll counter for one. This is where I'd rather spend my resources, guys, against decks that wanna trade the board. Make them Make your attackers be your blockers and protect this. Don't protect your life. I think, again, that's just, in my opinion, how you should play. So we'll go like this. We'll pop remove there. Just because this is a 7k blocker slash attacker later, so I'd rather have it like this. Also... Now that this is reduced, it's very hard for him to just like block and counter comfortably. And again, now that even if I go to one now, guys, like he's not even going to have time to think about my life here. He has to worry about my board that's threatening lethal. Um, so again, going down to one is hella safe. Not a problem at all. Putting two on Ivan. And now I'll counter. I'm gonna kill him with Chopper. 
I think that I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna set that up for myself. Oh God, just gas. This is why Strawbeard is a top deck, by the way. <laughs> um, let's just swing five first. If I bait him into a block, I'll kill it, and then just keep my face. Like my hand is too good right now. So, I don't even care if he has two 7k attackers, I have 8k natural, um, and my one blocker that's just sitting there, I have plenty of counter in hand. Um, this is working out. I like this a lot. No shot. Uh, he has any way back into this game. Yeah, this is why we play Strawberry, guys. Um, the natural ability to draw our cards in a very aggressive red deck, um, and the inability of, oh, you're an idiot, <laughs> for my opponent to, to actively, like, respond to my board. Um, do you want to talk about cards that I think are overpowered? It's actually none of the characters. I have no problem with the characters that exist in red. It's the fact that we have access to these cards. <laughs> Um, you may not be seeing this across the board in red decks right now, but trust me, when set 3 drops and you have uh, the new Marco plus Buggy, which is basically a Nami for events with an aggressive body, because uh, he's a 1 cost 3k, um, you'll see red decks stuff all this in there. And it's just like, how the fuck am I supposed to finish a game with 2 Don up? Two life, and he has like fucking radical beams at guard points. Like it's it's kind of cancer. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> All right, so let's just start swinging for the fences here. We'll swing five to start, and I'll boost him to seven. Attack for seven. Uh, this 7k swing is fine just because um, <clears throat> if he doesn't have a counter in hand, this blocks, uh, like they just die. Alright, now let's catch him with the chopper disrespect. As my boy would say, the reindeer demands blood. <laughs> Could I have done it with Luffy? Yeah. Is it as satisfying? Hell no. Attack for 11, baby. Even if they were all 2k counter, there's no shot. <laughs> I think he's upset. Yeah, there we go. Uh, not sure if this is set to... Um, I said it briefly in my last video, and I also said it on Reddit. Uh, Croc is actually pretty good against uh, Stage Beard in set three. Uh, he was actually seeing an uptick just because you can tempo them. And they also have access to the new event card um, that I'll go into. He's going second. Oh, that is not terrible. I'll keep it. Um, just because I have the one drop, I'll take this. Just so I have a curve, and we'll go. 3-5 and have Thesis backup counter. The 5 is better against uh, the Croc. Actually, again, if it's set 2, I don't I actually don't know what I'm playing against yet. But yeah, there's an event card in blue in set 3 that's 4 cost, bottom deck, a... I believe it's a 5 cost or less. I, I actually do think so. Um, which is huge. That's what let Crocodile come back. 
Um, and again, they'll be like, well, why not play Dofi? I hate this argument, guys. <laughs> Dofi does different things. Crocodile plays a more control style of game where Dofi is a little more aggro by nature of his ability. Uh, and then just being able to do be like play the event, then use the ability late game. Like you have all those options there. So Crocodile does different things. I'll just say that. Uh, he's going me. I'm on the play, so I'll counter one time. And I'll save the rest for to protect Zoro. Uh, this is a three dawn investment, so I'm not too sad. Right, it doesn't look like set three. Play this pass. And we're on play to curve into Whitebeard. So this is three dawn. He only has three active after. And he'll probably go fetch his passy, blocker passy. Eh, I think it's kind of ass cheeks personally, but you know, it is what it is. Um, he auto loses the game if he uses the ability now. <laughs> I will say that. I don't expect him to do it yet. He might be forced to next turn though. I'm not going to lie. Uh, just because of what my board's going to look like. Um, he might definitely have to um, use the ability sooner than he wants. Um, so we're going to go 7. I do this first just because I um, don't want him to have overheat, so I always try and use the three cost first. Um, I know I, the, the ordering was weird power-wise, like you want to do your weak swing first, but this is just too much. <laughs> this is why this style of croc I don't think is going to succeed well. Uh, in set three, even post ban, it's too much. Uh, not not necessarily because I think Strawberry is going to be good next set. It's more of um, uh, Zoro still. He still does Zoro things. That's not going to change at all. All right. Uh, because I'm dropping back to back nine drops here, it's going to be disgusting. <laughs> I'm going to take one hit just to see what I draw. I was hoping for more counter stat, but it's fine. Uh, with what we have in hand, I'm fucking this shit up anyway. <laughs> so we're going to attack five. That's all I have to do with zero. <clears throat> he can get value off this. It doesn't really matter just because of what I have in my hand. This is why I said I, I think he was probably worth trying to slow me down by using the ability. Um, like this, this isn't doing anything for you. I don't know if he's just playing passy spam and has like 10 of these or something in his deck, but it's, he might just be memeing here. Speaking of memes, I forgot to play my white beard. God, I'm tired. Ugh. Ugh. Just play the white beard. I feel really bad. I could have taken three cards from him. <laughs> or he would have just blocked. But whatever. I'm bad. So yeah. Anyway, back to this game. Just overall strawbeard stuff. As you guys can see, this is kind of why I like having this card here. <clears throat> He's just really good at helping to, to keep the pressure. If he swings anywhere, um, I am going to just protect it. And then when I slam the next 9 drop, 
Like I'm protected from anything he does here. Um, I am actually just hold the counter set. Just in case he tries to diversify his threats here. Wow, uh, because like I said, I'm, I am going to go back to back not 9 drop on him. Like, these three are going to be very hard to swing into. nothing but imagine if sables was the card i was talking about because it, it does have a trigger main effect like this is just such a better card <laughs> uh, so he divides his dawn up uses three to deploy another shit blocker another shit blocker um i am gonna otama this by the way uh just so i have more more swings he's lucky i don't have machina Otherwise, I'd be navigating this ass right now. But pretending, well, he could have it. He's already shown me. Uh, he's only shown me this, actually. I don't know if he has a level of being. He could be bluffing. Either way, I'm going. I'm going in. <laughs> uh, let's just see what he does here. Okay. Tama here. We're gonna swing like this, get rid of her, force the block. We're gonna swing nine, swing ten. Eleven. Eleven's good. Double eleven's fine. This is love, love. And I do not want to rematch your bad deck. All right, I got a game against my mom. Uh, I do have the Frankie into this. I am missing a, a little bit of stuff here, uh, but the fact that I get to draw two cards a turn, I'll try it out. Uh, question is, am I playing the mirror? Just like a seventy percent chance I am. Uh, if I'm playing stage playing the mirror uh so if stage beard continues to be super represented i can actually see um stage coming back but christian why is stage um better than straw it's because you go over the top of them it's easier for you to close out a game against them than it is for them uh, I'll take one. This kind of game of just pings here. I'm not really doing much else. But yeah. So, I th think stage is still strong in the meta game. Uh, it's just how everything shapes out. To be honest with you. Just because we have our nine drop, it is worth thinking about. Uh, but I'll probably get rid of her. I don't think I'm playing against like my adaptation of the deck yet. I don't. I'm highly doubt I'll run into another chopper. I might be one of the only people that do it. Because um, again, it's just a one of. It's not like I'm doing anything crazy here. Um, play the seven. Uh, ace next turn is really big. Uh, well, not me that. <clears throat> uh, I'll use Machina. Now, um, I will say you always got to be careful because you're very early. 
<coughs> early turns. Sorry, guys. That's <clears throat> gross. My bad. Your early turns uh, will be you tapping out. So sometimes it is worth just using a, an event counter here and there. That way, you, when you do tap out, you have your 2Ks available. Um, but I don't think I need to yet. Yeah, just let that go. Attack for six. Um, so yeah. Uh, fortunately for me, I just have, by way of my board, I'm able to have establish and put pressure early. Uh, even if he drops nine drop on me right now, I'm super safe. Because I'll be able to nine drop and have Radical Beam open. That's a two. And that's a one. I'm not gonna attack anything except this this guy right here. Um to sap him of resources. Oh, he just gives it to me. Okay. Uh, but like I said, I'll play nine, attack him now. The only thing that beats me right now is not beats me, but puts pressure on me is another nine. Uh, but him taking the damage shows me that he doesn't have it, otherwise he would have protected himself there. Because uh, again, I can't swing 7, and I'm not going to use my last on here. Uh, I will take this hit. I will use the trigger for myself. Because again, I only have the one Don open. I'm going to go for game next turn anyway. So, even if he dumps everything in this white beard right now to try and kill me, um, I'm pretty safe. So, this is an easy 13k survive. And he's going to hold two event cards up. And he disconnects because he doesn't have it. Alright, last game since it's smoky. I'm going to go second just to mess with his curve. I like our hand. I'll keep. Um, just because I can go 2-4 and then 6. So obviously I'm going to pass. Um, Smoker is a slower control -y deck, but I only really deploy Sanji against Zephyr. Zephyr, I think, is where I want the damage more. Against the Smoker, it's not that big a deal. Um, I only have the, the one, so I'm going to go like this. So there's attack for six. Uh, take a 2k from him, most likely. Personally, I think taking the first hit is always worth it. I don't think it's worth burning my hand down too early. But he decides to do it anyway. That's just me, though. That's how I've always played the game. I like playing with more cards. Uh, so being at four doesn't really matter. You're taking the damage at some point anyway. <laughs> um, it's attack six. Tech six. Tech six. I have the answer right away for this smoker, thanks to this. We're not a typical red deck, we're not playing Jet Pistol. If you're playing Jet Pistol in your Strawbeard build, ew. Um, so yeah, you don't really care about smokers can't be KO'd effects too much. Um, the blockers, specifically Borsellino, gets annoying late, so it makes your white beard secondary ability a little annoying. Uh, and if you have Robin early, she kind of gets less value if he curves it. But right now we we kind of screwed up his curve. Um, we kept him off two four six. Instead, he has to go one three five. Granted, he got exactly what he wanted here. It's just not great. Uh, he could have Sakazuki here. Well, it doesn't, thankfully. Um, which is always something to remember that they have. So that you don't... Uh, like, take a free trade. And then he Sakazuki's clears your board. That would be horrendous for you. <sighs> um... 
We just keep going. <laughs> I'm going to hold up the Radical Beam since I'll be at two now. We have Ace into Whitebeard. Um, and again, guys, this is why this deck is so powerful. It's just, not just because you're playing red good stuff. It's the fact that unlike Zoro or Luffy or any red leader that could ever come out, that is out, sorry, like you have extra resources, which no other deck has. So it's like you're playing the aggro plan on top of having just like you're never losing a card. Like I've played a card every turn and look at my hand. <laughs> Except for turn one. But other than that, I've played a card every turn and I've countered twice. And I have more cards than my opponent who's at one. <laughs> so like it's this is why this deck is amazing. Uh, but it is not unbeatable, guys. Uh I, I'm assuming he's scared of nine drop here. <laughs> um Uh, I'll take one. Like I said, guys, going to one against this deck is 100% fine. If he taps both of these, yeah. <laughs> he knows there's nothing he can really do here. Like, I'm going to play the Nigra. drop. He's going to try and turn sideways. I'm going to trade the board anyway, and it's GG. Like, what do you do? All right, guys, so this is my overpowered, busted strawberry deck. <laughs> Um, like I said, it's not unbeatable. You have a lot of game to it. Um, Zoro is a decent matchup. I know some people would argue otherwise, but it's really not that bad for you. Um, the fact that uh, you're taking a life every turn, and they have a lot of quick, easy ways to ping you for six, will kill your hand quickly. Which is why I keep saying, like, don't overvalue your nine drop. Is it amazing against Zoro? Yes. Is it um, worth losing the game sometimes? No. Like, you have to really, like, weigh that as the Strawberry player. <clears throat> but as a Zoro player, like, I'll say you gotta do. Hit me for six over and over and over. Um, you know, you can save your Zoros for late, which is what I would do. That way you can uh, then hit big. Because if all you're making me do is like go Makino into Nami and then one off your Zoro lead, like it feels really bad for me to waste the 6k swing uh, into these Namis or Magra, or etc. Right? So that's all you're doing early. You're using these shitty bodies to, to pressure me and then you can drop your Zoro to try and kill me, your leader swings, uh, your 9 drops, because they have access to 9 drop too, guys, it's not just us. Um, so Zoro, I think, is actually... I think we're favored, but it's not impossible at all. Um, this build specifically for me, like, is because Zoro is so popular, and I think this is the better red deck out of the two in the, in the match. But Zoro still, can still beat you. Zoro can beat anybody. <laughs> um, Kinemon, I think, definitely beats this deck. They... It really just depends on how well you can cope with pressure. Um, if you're one of those players that gets too nervous, um, maybe this is like, like green might not be good for you. Like you, you're the turtle deck. Like, don't get me wrong, Kinemon's an offensive deck, but like you need to know how to play against this deck under pressure uh, and answer efficiently. I still think green's super good. Um, black. This is not a meta game for Black, in my opinion. I think Strawbeard dumpsters you. Um, anybody who says Whitebeard is free is fucking lying. <laughs> Play me and I will 9-0 you. Out of 10 games, I promise you. I will win. Um, this deck is very annoying to deal with as the Black deck. As the Black-Purple deck. Maybe I've heard... Uh, Magellan could maybe do well, or like a Kaido, but even then, I think it's really tough. <laughs> I think purple just is a meme right now, personally. I think Kaido is probably the better of the two. Uh, I do respect people for trying more Magellan. I've always thought that deck was really cool. Do I have it built? I do. Uh, these are like some of the fun versions that I mess around with. Um, but 
take it with a grain of salt, guys. Remember, set one, we had Blurple Croc hit uh, case tournament, and everybody's like, oh my god, look at NA, we're revolutionizing the meta. That deck never saw another with W again. <laughs> uh, that deck is ass. That was more of people just not knowing how to play the game correctly. Um, but back to Shrubbeard. This deck can be answered. It is definitely the flavor of the month right now, though. So uh, you definitely have to get your games in against it if you're not going to be joining. Um, blue, uh, funny enough, I, I know like the Ivan game, it didn't look like it. I don't think blue is that bad against you. Um, but again, like you're drawing more cards than any other deck in the game right now. So it's just it's really, really tough. It's really tough for you to fall behind anybody um, when you have everything like this. Um, but if you guys like the video, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below uh, what you've been playing for set two. If anybody else has any other regional um, success, I would love to hear it. Um, and just give the deck a, a try. Let me know how it goes for you. Uh, the Zoro and the Chopper. But again, thanks again for watching, guys. Peace.